Welcome to The Flourish Frequency, the show where we activate and amplify the frequencies of success, joy, and abundance. I'm your host, Beth Larson, a high performance and quantum success coach. If you're ready to ditch the hard hustle and embrace a more effortless flow, then this is the show for you. Together, we'll tap into quantum thinking, harness the laws of the universe, and unlock the secrets to living a life of more. More joy, more energy, more passion, more money, and more meaning. No more simply surviving, we're going beyond thriving. It's time to flourish. The Flourish Frequency Show starts now. We are going beyond thriving to flourishing. I love that opener. <laughs> I love, I love that opener. I'm like, did you see my little, like a bobblehead? Like I'm going like this, every, every part of that. Sorry, yeah. I didn't need to interrupt you. I just got really excited right there. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I'm ex equally as excited every time I hear it too, because it, every time I hear myself saying those words, it just like makes my heart happy because that's truly the work that I'm here to do. So I'm very excited and I am excited to be back here today. As we said there, the Flourish Frequency Show is the show where we help you elevate your energy, ignite your passion and truly flourish. And, you know, today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is how to create, curate and cultivate a community that fosters your flourish frequency. And I'm so thrilled to have you back with me again, Dr. Pat, yeah. <laughs> because you are someone that I am thrilled to say is now a part of my own community, somebody who's been instrumental in supporting me with launching the show, finding my voice and helping me articulate it. So thank you for being part of my community. <laughs> I love this. You know, I was so excited about this show today. Can I tell you why for a couple of reasons? Yeah. Um, there are a lot of things, of course, we're doing, but I have started to use your language right? Mm. And I always give you credit for it. And so I was talking with somebody earlier and sometimes in the world, and you've done a show, we've done a show on this, and this is an extension of that. Sometimes when we do not have intentionality, because mm. that's part of your title today, right? Yeah. Sometimes when we don't have intentionality. And I was talking to somebody the other day and they were asking me, why should we do a show with you, you know, th with this network? And, mm -hmm. and, and I said, that is a really good question. And I said, what do you want? And clearly when you hear people, what do you want? And I think you use the word desire, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah, wish they'd use the word flourish. I wish they would say, so yeah. I said to this person, I said, you need to listen to the upcoming show. <laughs> with with Beth Loss. Yeah. <laughs> I said, because if you could just add the word flourish to the end of this long list you gave me, mm. it's going to help. But boy, we are so willing to compromise and set the limits on our universe. And I know you're going to talk about this today, but yeah. in the previous shows, we've talked about and I have to tell you, I wish I could take Matt back the Dr. Pat tagline. I cannot. It's out there. It's called <laughs> talk. I, I'm sorry. It's called, this is because when this was 20 years ago. So yeah, you're going yeah. to have to give me a little break on this. <laughs> but but 20 years ago, talk radio to thrive by. Yeah. Because back then we were going from defeat to depression, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And flourish does not work with yeah. talk radio. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Let's talk about this distinction because we're so eager to settle. Can you talk about thriving versus flourishing? Yeah. Especially for this person that I know is listening. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. And uh, thank you for bringing that up too, because I know sometimes people are just tuning in for the first time. And, you know, that this word flourish was very carefully chosen. Um, I can't say I, I specifically carefully chose it. It's my, my soul chose it. You know, when I was in burnout 10 plus years ago now, which I can't believe it's been that long, but I was going through like severe burnout and I just kept saying to myself, I feel like I'm dying on the vine and I just want to flourish. And I knew at the time, you know, that I was saying, saying those words just instinctively. But when I started to really, you know, take some time to distinguish the difference between thriving and flourishing thriving is for me, it's something that so many people aspire to. And I was aspiring to thrive at one point. Uh, but thriving is, you know, 
I'll put it this way. Always think of those plants that are coming up through the concrete, right? The ones that are pushing through the concrete and they're persevering, but they're doing it the hard way, right? They're, they're doing things the hard way. And so there's a whole lot there that they've accomplished. I mean, despite all the odds, they have accomplished something, um, but it's just the hard way. When I think of flourishing, I think of a huge field of flowers that is just luxurious and opulent and you know beautiful colors everywhere and surrounded by each other. And that's, that's the community aspect for me when I think of flourishing. You don't do it on your own. You're not going it alone and you're not you know, hanging your, your hat on being the sole survivor out there um, who's doing it. And I, I find it interesting that most of the plants that are coming up through the concrete are actually weeds, <laughs> right? When you think of it, <laughs> not so many pretty flowers that are coming up there. Most of the time they're weeds and that's because weeds tend to be very perseverant, right? Yes, And so that's something to think about in our own lives are the weeds that we have in terms of our thoughts and our emotions and all of that. Where, are the, where do we have the weeds that are so persistent? But there is a difference there. And this show is not about just thriving. This show is truly about flourish, flourishing and getting into that frequency that is flourishing yeah. that allows for support. So this whole topic today, and it is intentional. You know, the word intentional is not actually in the topic, but the words create and curate and cultivate, those are all acts of intentionality. And so it, it's a very intentional process. Yes. I love this. And can I just talk, comment for a minute? Because Linda, my best friend, it, this is what she will say to me. So I'm always, this is so funny. <laughs> We'd be driving down a road, Beth, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that flower. Mm -hmm. I'm like, can you see that? That flower? Can we stop over? Can we stop? Maybe we can. That's a weed. Linda's like, that's a weed. <laughs> I said, I don't care if it's a. We have these beautiful things that pop up in the Pacific Northwest, and they're just beautiful, and they're green and they're lush. That's a weed. <laughs> and it's so fascinating because. We gave this 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 thing that doesn't fit a category a name called a weed. Mm, we gave it yeah. a category. Now, clearly, yeah. there are some weeds in my grass that I just need to get rid of. <laughs> but if I didn't have grass and they were just growing there, they would be beautiful in themselves, you see? Yeah, yeah. And that's what you're going to talk about today. Community yeah. is so important. Yeah, it really is. You know, there are... When we talk about frequency, we're talking energy, right? And for me, I look at the different types of energy. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, we have mental energy and the thoughts that we're thinking all the time. And those are either positive thoughts or they're negative thoughts. And they're either serving our energy or they're sapping our energy. We have emotional energy, which actually comes from those thoughts <laughs> that we are thinking that are creating the emotions that are either, you know, expansive or contractive. We've got the physical energy, which is the result of the other two, you know, we either have physical energy or we feel drained. Um, and we have spiritual energy, which is to me, the ultimate energy source. It is source. It is God, universe, spirit, whatever <laughs> that is for you. But that is the source of all the energy. When we make things outside of us, our energy sources, we're, we're actually depleting the most powerful resource. But there's also the category of environmental energy. You know, that would be the people, the places, the things that are you're surrounding yourself with. And those things are either feeding your energy or sapping your energy. Now, I do think it's really important to note that it's possible to thrive in any environment. So even in the worst environments, you can still thrive. You know, I, I always think here of Victor Frankl's quote from Man's Search for Meaning, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms to choose one's own attitude in any given set of circumstances. So even in the worst circumstances, if you were not given the perfect family, if you weren't, you know, if you weren't graced with um, support in your life, it doesn't mean you can't thrive. You can get stronger in the face of resistance. Hmm. Um, but that's a distinguishing thing from the whole place of flourishing. And, yeah. and even in the worst of circumstances, you can still 
consciously choose to do things differently that will start to shift what your circumstances are. Yeah. I have to tell you, I've been reflecting a lot about my life. I'm, I'm, you know, launching my, this is not as pretty a word as flourished. Okay. (laughs) I'm launching Unstuckable, which has been my brand for 20 years. And it is the story of my life, but I got it. I have been thinking about it. So Beth, I want to ask you this question because you really tapped into it right here. I grew up, if you took a look at my life up to age seven, and then from seven on, when my mom committed suicide, my dad remarries. And my dad remarries this beautiful woman, blonde mm-hmm. hair, blue eyes. My dad is like, what, 50 or something. That's my, right. So he marries my stepmom, who's 22 ish. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> just like my sister was almost as old as her, right? <laughs> but this is this was the way of the South. She had her first mm-hmm. child at 12 and second child at 13. So I was thinking about this show and I thought outside of Victor Frankel, Mother Teresa, who do I know? And I realized mm-hmm. that between her and Linda's mom, they mm-hmm. helped shape me to be the person I am today. Yeah. Right. And I think about this woman constantly smiling, positive. You know, she grew up as a non-denominational Christian. I think she even listened to John Osteen at some point. So anytime she would quote from any kind of anything, and she would quote yeah. Buddha as well as Jesus, it was her own version of it. It'd be yeah. like, honey. I know they changed the the wine to the fish, but wouldn't they have been happy to have some black eyed peas? No, this is this is her. Yeah. She was the epitome of attitude and mindset. And when my dad lost everything right after she married him, mm. she didn't leave him. Mm. I watched her. And I just want to talk about this because I wonder how you can help people today. I know you do this in your coaching, but I really want to help people elevate their mindset, even if you use the Hawkins scale. Yeah. I just hope today we can help people connect. Yeah. Well, it I I love that you're saying this because, you know, as, as much as we're talking here about creating and cultivating community. It's important to remember that you're somebody else's community, right? Like that it's not just about your community. It's about who are you, the community for somebody else who might be in that tough situation. And she happened to be your community at that time. And you were in a a tough situation going through one. And so she showed up in your life during that time. But it's a responsibility for all of us to not just surround ourselves with great people, but to remember, are we being the great person for somebody else? Are we holding our, Mm. our own frequency so that we give them something to calibrate up to? I want to ask you this question. I want to talk about consciously creating and curating. Mm -hmm. And I know this is something we're going to talk about now, but I really want to talk about it. You know, a number of years ago, I met Dee Wallace and Mm. uh, um, I, I had a long conversation with her and I said, Dee, I know that you were the mom in ET, but you can come out now and be a spiritual person. We brought her up to Seattle. We plugged her into a community, but I never thought about it this way. I think where we are today in the world is one of the most critical places to do exactly what you're talking about. And my, may I have a fear? My fear or caution is that we will become so digitally programmed, we forget about community Mm -hmm. now. Let me put the caveat. Thank you, Zoom. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Because what did Zoom do in the world of technology? What would our lives have been like during the pandemic, if I could say, without Zoom? Right. It brought people together. Eating Thanksgiving dinner in five different places of the country. They're all like eating the dinner. But what have you learned in the work that you do? How do we do this? How do we do this? Well, everything comes back to intentionality and consciousness, right? So if you're, if you are consciously and intentionally creating community, you will use the tools to serve that. 
in service of your greater mission in service of your values in service of your dreams. If you're not a person who has dreams, if you're, or allow themselves to have them, I should say, or if you have ill intent, you're going to use those same tools for other things. It, it, anything, and especially Mm. technology can be used for good. It can be used for not so good. I don't like using the word evil, (laughs) but you know, we all, it's a tool. It's a tool. It's up to the people and the consciousness through which we are actually choosing to use those tools. And curating, I chose that word very specifically because um, I hear it a lot of times, you know, from people. And I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. I work with a lot of people who are actually, I work with a few influencers. um, And so they're often really taking a look at things from a social media perspective. And they use social media as a tool. But how many times have you heard people complain about Facebook, complain about Instagram, complain about TikTok or whatever it is? For me, I embrace it and I actually encourage my clients to use it as a tool, not just for their business, but as a tool that's actually showing them where their frequency is at. Because the beauty of all of these things is they have algorithms and those algorithms are designed to to give you a big old mirror as to what you are putting out there. Because if you're not engaging with the negativity, your feed is not going to be filled up with it. If you're engaging with positivity, your feed will be filled up with that. And so if you don't like your feed, if you're complaining about Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is, start taking a look at what are you putting into it? You know, what are you feeding it with that's causing it to give you those results back? Because it's an algorithm. Bottom line. (laughs) <laughs> okay, I got to ask you this question. I, I want to make sure for those of you out there, please go over and check out BethLarsonCoaching.com. And it's Larson with an S E N. Yes. Uh, Beth, it's B E T H <laughs> LarsonCoaching.com. And I want you to go out here because you, when I first met you, we have mentored each other. Aww. Okay. As much as you, you t- just, you know, acknowledge the work that I've done, but I have to acknowledge you because. You planted a seed and that seed is growing and it's the seed of women who want more. Mm. Okay. Now I know we're not talking about that specifically today, Yeah, but I want people to know when they go to visit your website, they're not going to just find flourish. They're going to find tools and ways you help people yeah. have it be okay to want more. Cause I got to ask you this question. I believe since I've met you, talk radio to thrive by, of course, that's, that's got to live with that. I get it. <laughs> but, but here's what I'm learning. In the world we live in now, thriving will get us to a really good place. Yeah. But wanting more will help us flourish. And I think that's a distinction I'd love for you to talk about because I don't know, I don't know if it's men, women, but I know yeah. for women, we do not how to know, know how to do the more thing. So therefore, are we kind of shackling ourselves to flourish? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I know I've talked about this on previous episodes, but I, I will bring it up on probably every single one because that concept of more, I think is, is something that has gotten really uh, discombobulated. Is that the word I want? It's that's gotten a good word. messy. Um, and people feel guilty or shame around wanting more, but more is our evolutionary impulse that's within us. You know, we are here and designed to have more, to want more, to grow more. Um, and this is what, this is something I say on every episode, probably, (laughs) but you (laughs) cannot have more on a foundation of not enough. Yeah. So if you're sitting in that space of not enoughness and you're sitting in the space of want or need you're in the space of not enough. You're in the space of um, lack. And so the more, you know, you'll still through the law of abundance, you will still get more. You're just going to get more of not enough. You're going to get more of lack. And, and I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but that is, you're going to get an abundance of whatever it is that you are fixating on. So if you can start to really appreciate what you have, then you can actually have more. And what's really important that I, I focus on for the more are, is more joy, more energy, right? More passion, 
more meaning. I I throw money in there because I'm not afraid to go at go at no. the money topic because when we have more money, we can do more <laughs> in yeah. the world. And I think that that is really important as well. And yeah. you know, again, too many of us and women in particular, right? We we are in that place where we were taught that wanting more or is it's greedy or or whatever. That's not the way I see it. And that's not the way I feel it in my body. But yeah. I felt it before from a place of not enough. Mm. It doesn't feel the same. That's it, not flourishing. <laughs> that's not flourishing. And by the way, let's just stay with this for a minute, because we're going to talk about cultivate and yeah. what cultivate means. You know, when you talk to people that have achieved wealth, let's just call it wealth. Yeah. And I'm talking money. I'm not going to I'm not going to skirt around the money thing either. You could call it prosperity and abundance, but I want to talk about money. Money is the modern day equivalent to what people did thousands of years ago, thousands mm -hmm. of years ago. What's the difference? I'm going to give you a gold statue. You're going to give me an herb. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. It's the same idea. But somehow, somehow we have not learned how to cultivate a flourish mindset, not just yeah. about money, but about our health, our well-being. Yeah. And yes, I do think women are in a different category and are attempting to catch up. Yeah. But cultivate is really an underpinning to all of this. Um, I do think as women, we do something extremely well, and that is build community partnerships and collaboration. Yeah. If we could only turn that into flourishing, <laughs> right? Yeah. Isn't that what this show's about? Yeah. Well, collaboration is a huge piece of that. There's another C word there, <laughs> <laughs> right? But collaboration is not, collaboration lends to that idea of more, right? Because when you collaborate together, you have the chance to create synergy. You have to create a chance to create something that is, you know, that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, that it's where everybody wins, right? When you're collaborating, when you're competing, that's a, well, that's a C word too, but it's not, a, it doesn't really lead to community. Competing means it comes from that space of if I have more than you don't have as much, right? It's like, we're fighting over a piece of the pie, whereas in collaboration, we're just making a bigger, bigger pie. Yeah. So everybody yeah. gets to have more. Yeah. Um, and that's the difference to me also between thriving and flourishing, right? Thriving is going to kind of look to compete. It's going to look to get its fair share. Um, and, and again, there's not, it's not all bad to thrive. Thrive is a good thing. So I'm not trying to say thrive is, is no. an all bad thing. I just, there's that space beyond it. And I think we're also in a place in our world right now where we need people more into the collaboration coming together, um, and, looking at things from the bigger pie that we can create instead of tearing each other down to get to the few oh. scrap scrappy pieces of pie that are left. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you said something very key, but also earlier you talked about the fact that we could create this even in the worst environment. I don't think there was ever a worse environment than what Mother Teresa was in. I am mm. sure that the Holocaust and Victor Frankl was one of them. But when I yeah. think about Mother Teresa, right? Yeah. And what she needed to flourish, where that came from, that was a horrific situation, but she flourished, right? Do you know what I'm trying yeah. to say? As an individual, she could light up a space. Yeah. You know, her, her, her commitment was unwavering, right? Yeah. And for her, she flourished in a place and a time where it's hard not to remember what she did in what many people would say, that is a no win situation, sister. Yep. Yeah. Right? And, this is and actually I, why when I work with people, uh -huh. I work on all those other areas of energy mm. first before we mm -hmm. get to environmental, because the mental, the emotional, the physical, the spiritual, those are the components mm -hmm. that are all about personal power. And so when Mother Teresa had incredible personal power, Nothing in her circumstances would ever have taken away from her ability to get things done for her ability to make an impact. Didn't matter who was, was, you know, surrounding with, and she brought that kind of power with her. So again, no matter what, she would go into the worst circumstances and she was giving people something to calibrate to instead yeah. of getting sucked up into it. But 
what we're not taught often is to, how to create that personal power for yourself. You know, all too often we're in a place where we're, we're going into the space of commiserating to make each other feel better. And that doesn't really help anybody out. You know, the word misery is in the word commiserate for a reason. You know, you, it may make you temporarily feel better, but it doesn't make you stronger. It doesn't allow you to actually persevere, you know, it, in spite of and because of. And for me as a coach, I, I take that really, really seriously because for me, I, I want my clients to always have something that they can calibrate up to. I will stand by them while they're, they're going through it and while they're, you know, going through the push and the pull and the uncomfortableness as they're trying on new things but I'm not going to just make them feel better just to feel better because that yeah. doesn't help them get their, their dreams. It, it, that's not how you, how you evolve. It's not how you grow. And it's not how you flourish. It's not, I want to, before we, I know you're going to go to break, but I want to throw another name out we haven't talked about. And I want y'all to do your research on peace pilgrim. That's, mm. that's peace pilgrim's name. Okay. Please. Do some research, you all out there. Just just kind of look Peace Pilgrim up. And I, I just, I want you to just take a look at this, this person that will probably end up in oblivion because we don't talk very much about her. We don't talk about why she, why she went on, on foot and hitchhiking and gave these impromptu. But I want you to just take a look at that because... You see, we don't talk about Peace Pilgrim as having a gazillion dollars. Mm -hmm. But if you remember who Peace Pilgrim was and what this glorious transition of Peace Pilgrim was about, you'll get exactly what Beth is talking about. You can flourish. And in her case, picking up a ride from a serial killer truck driver and Whoa. convincing this truck driver not to kill her. But Google the journey of Peace mm -hmm. Pilgrim, right? Because what we're talking about, it doesn't matter what where you come from in life. But I know I couldn't do it alone. And I think that's what you're saying, Beth. This is your, yeah. your entire foundation of coaching is based on helping people step by step. Yeah. Yep. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go to break because okay. I want you to take us through one of, I think one of the easiest words to say, but one of the most difficult things to do, cultivate. Mm, yeah. I can cultivate. I'm telling you, Linda will tell you I did this. <laughs> I had this thing growing in my rock garden and it just shot up and I started to cultivate its growth. Mm. What did I find out about this thing in my rock garden that took an army to pull out? What was it? What was it? To, to me, it was going to be a beautiful tree. To everybody in the Pacific Northwest, oh my gosh, that is a dut dut dut, and that is a weed tree. <laughs> Let's take a short break. Okay. We'll be right back. All right. Yeah. Welcome back. Beth. Okay. Yeah. Look, I, I want to remind everybody what we're talking about today, because I, I don't know how to say this any, any clearer. Flourishing is our birthright. Mm -hmm. Why do we know this? We see a universe that we cannot even define. We yeah. can't define it. And I studied with, I, I went, I worked with the guy that did define the big bang guy, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mr. Bagel guy. But we still can't define it. Yeah. We can't understand in our logical sense how some people do something and others don't. But I need to go back to Einstein. I really want you to talk about this. Einstein was very good at saying you cannot solve the problem level it was created. But then I wish you were here. Yeah. I wish you were here, Dr. Einstein, because I'd say, how do you cultivate that? That's what I'm going to ask you, Beth. Yeah. How do you cultivate it? Okay. <laughs> I love that. Well, first, you know, going back to one thing we do know about the universe is that it is ever expanding. <laughs> right. So, just, right there, just like again. my waist, just like my waistline. Yeah. 
<laughs> but the universe is another example of more, right? Like it's just everything is always expanding for more. And even when things are not expanding, it's energy reorganizing itself for something more. Um, so I, I, that that's a whole other topic. <laughs> I could go down that that rabbit hole for quite a bit. But, um, you know, this idea of cultivating, I think is really important. You were talking a little bit about the weeds in your, your lot that you found and you started to cultivate that weed. (laughs) And meanwhile, everybody else is telling you, no, you don't want that. (laughs) But I love that you were finding beauty in it. You know, it was gorgeous to me. I had something so beautiful when it's fl- when it's flourishing, actually, um, turns out to be a big old weed and invasive. And actually, I didn't know it at first until it took over everything. Um, so it does, it really does though bring you to the point of you've got to know what you want. You've got to be really um, consciously aware of what you have already created um, in terms of your community and what you're cultivating in the community that you have currently. But you, me, all of us, intentionality is an energy. I don't know if it was Dr. Wayne Dyer. I, but I'm really not good with names like about that. But I want to hold this point because this is what Beth Larson does. You know, she will work with you so long as you are eager for more. So long as you want to flourish. She and I have this very thing in common. Now, when I declared that, I didn't know that I would be doing a network that I just have to keep growing more and more. I didn't know that. I didn't know that flourish does not have a limitation. And I'm glad I didn't. But what you are saying is, let's talk about an energy. There are people you walk in a room, Beth, I know you've done this. You walk in a room and somebody walks in and you would think they are the queen herself. Yeah. Right. (laughs) They've got the it factor. (laughs) They got the it factor. You also know There are some people that walk in the room and you think, please, can you leave the room just as fast as you walked in? Cultivating, like I'd love for you to talk about it. Cultivating has has to teach us how to, in your words, calibrate up. Can you talk about that? Yeah. And you know, the the quote that came to mind for me at first was the Gandhi quote, be the change you you wish to see. But I actually had to look that up because I wanted to make sure that was actually correct what he had said. And it's actually a longer quote. And I wrote it down here. So just give me a second here. What he actually said is we, but mirror the world, all the tendencies present in the outer world are to be found in the world of our body. If we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change as a man changes his own nature. So does the attitude of the world change towards him. Oh, I'm getting a freezing again. Yeah, I'm keep that's talking. Okay. I'm hoping you're hearing me okay. Yeah, keep um, talking because whenever you okay, stop good. talking, I just jump in. Okay. Yay, so that's not, collaboration. Sure we, I, uh, we must be breaking the internet here today. But, but um, we are because what are we <laughs> talking about? First of all, we talked about the ever expanding universe. So that's number one. Yeah. The second thing that you mentioned, if I could just recap, and I want you to finish this Gandhi quote because it's so important. Yeah. The second thing we talked about is it is our birthright. We are part of that. We are part of the flourishing idea. We are that. Not the 1% that you read about in the headlines. We are that. Yeah. The third thing we're also talking about is mindset and attitude. And both of us have shared that. Yeah. But Gandhi's full quote is a little bit eye-opening, don't you think? Yeah. Did you catch all of it? Do I need to go through it again? Do the last part. Yeah. Do it again because we take it out of context. Yeah. As a man changes his own nature, so does the attitude of the world change towards him. This is the divine mystery supreme, a wonderful thing it is, and the source of our happiness. We need not wait to see what others do. It is all within us to bring the energy. You know, um, my my mentor, Brenda Burchard, always says um, a power plant doesn't have energy, it generates it. Yeah. You know, here we are talking about plants and weeds and all that. I consider myself a power plant, right? Like I'm a, I'm a power plant and it's my responsibility to generate what I want and bring it to others. And your mentor, Brenda Bruchard, for those of you who don't know, 
is a is a walk the talk example of that. Yeah. I don't care if you've ever been to one of the seminars, if you're part of the training, if you're in the high yeah. performance, it doesn't matter. When somebody like that shows up, yeah, you don't even question yep. that statement. And you calibrate up to that energy, right? When you're in the room, he creates the energy and you calibrate up to it. And, I, you know, let me be clear. I'm not saying we don't all get to have bad days. We do, oh, please. right? It's just a matter of, are you somebody who lives in a bad day <laughs> or is that a one-off, right? Is that, you know, is that a moment? Um, and are you that person again, that is like, I'm going to be up here and I'm going to hold this space so that you can come up and meet me. Okay. Or are you going down to get them and never coming back up? <laughs> okay. Do you know how I've had a bad day or a bad week? Okay. This is always going to be a baseline for everybody out there. Do you know how you can tell? Because I have done something all my life and I can't explain it. Look at how short my hair is. Yeah. I, Linda, I gave her the the, she, the shearing thingies over the weekend. I said, you need to cut this hair, right? That, wait. I, I'm not. Yes. <laughs> this because is how you have a bad hair. That's how you know. <laughs> There's a ritual somehow that must be a past life or something where doing that is symbolic. Now, I will tell you, I have time. I When I, when I yeah. revolted against... AT&T for the most ridiculous downsizing. And I went to the State of the Union Auditorium. I had shaved this head, Sinead O'Connor. So I don't know what that is, but, but that is how you know when I've had, like, I need a cleanse. But let's talk about this. Because yeah. each of us, while we have the ability to flourish, there may be some things we have to let go of, right? Yeah. Yeah, you do. You have to let go of the thoughts that aren't serving you, the emotions that aren't serving you. And sometimes you have to let go of the people that aren't serving you, you know, and you can do that from a place of love, not from a place of fear. You know, mm. the, the topic of boundaries has to come in here at some point when it comes to curating and cultivating your community. Yeah. I think what you're saying is you really have to look for the energetic blueprint that you want to become. Or you need to create the energetic blueprint for other people to come and level up, to calibrate up. Uh, the thing that that I love about Beth and Beth Larson is, and by the way, BethLarsonCoaching.com, and it's Larson with an E. The thing I love about not this just not just this conversation, but pretty much all her entire coaching program is that each and every one of us can take a look at what calibrate up means. Now, I wanted to say this to everybody out there. And again, you could go ahead and look at, um, you know, uh, power versus force and Hawkins, be beautiful scale. But think about this. When I'm down and out and homeless in New York City and I'm 17 years old, what did calibrate up mean for me then sitting on a curb? Well, calibrate up for me meant when the incredible Hare Krishna people, Hare Krishna people came mm -hmm. by chanting and looked at me on a curb, filthy, dirty, really hungry, nothing to drink. And they're beautiful. What calibrating up for me was when they offered me clean clothes, shower, a place to sleep. That was the best I could do then, Beth. Yeah. yeah. That was a big calibrating up. But just that community outreach yeah. from people that didn't know me helped me because I I think if they if that didn't happen I don't know where I'd be today. Do, do yeah. you get what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's that what's that phrase, you know, people want um a hand up not a hand out. Right? And that's I think what community is often about. It, certainly there's support in all kinds of ways when somebody is going through a tough time, but most people, you know, again, they're looking for the hand up, they're looking for the community that's going to pull them up, not um not just keep throwing stuff at them. Does mm -hmm. that, does that make does. sense? Yeah. I'm telling you, look, the, one of the greatest things that ever happened to me, people always ask me to do these cor corporate talks. They want me to talk about success and mm -hmm. sales. And I always tell them my hot dog story that, that I learned everything I needed to know about sales and marketing from selling hot dogs from a hot dog cart. Right. <laughs> but I don't tell them this other thing. See, I'm sitting in the Port Authority in New York and I got the baseball cap on and I'm begging for money. The Port Authority mm -hmm. is a place in New York where a lot yeah. of people go through. Everybody goes there. And so I had a fellow homeless person tell me what I had to do. 
but they didn't tell me this. So guy walks by and he's got a $10 bill, right? And mm -hmm. runs by, you run in the park and he sees me and I'm giving my speech and he says, you know why I'm not going to give you my $10? I said, you <laughs> thinking, why are you even talking to me? <laughs> he said, I'm not going to give it to you. Do you know why? And I said, no. He said, you, you, you're wearing a Yankees cap. I'm a Mets fan. <laughs> Next day, I got two caps. He walks by and he drops the 10 bucks in, in the Mets cap. Brilliant. Why am I talking about this? Yeah. We learn. Yeah. So what you're also saying, and you practice this, please reach out to help somebody. Yeah. I don't know why we've gotten so afraid to do that. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's what community is all about. And, and again, I, I'll, I'll keep using this word calibrate, like give people something to calibrate up to don't calibrate down. If they're going through the rough time, it doesn't make you heartless. It makes you strong and it gives you, gives them the strength to actually, you know, come up yeah. to meet you. And that's how communities grow. Mm -hmm. That's how communities evolve. That's how communities become more and are able to contribute more to this world. Yeah. You know, mama used to say, I want you to talk about this. I know we've got a few minutes left, but we got to talk about this. Mama used to say, you know, honey, only takes one bad apple in the bunch. And mm. we we yeah. never understood that. But then later on, she used to say, now, now look at if you're hungry, you ain't going to throw that bad apple out, are you? <laughs> and we just be like, OK, where are we going with this? She's, yeah, no, you're going to you're going to get that bad apple and you're going to just cut off the bad parts, aren't you? But you're going to mm -hmm. eat that apple, aren't you? So let's yeah. talk about this, because sometimes yeah. you'll be part of a community or you'll be part of a group. And yeah. there may be something or somebody in there. Yeah. Right. Now, what did I learn from the apple situation? My mama taught me how to cut precisionly, I could have been a surgeon, precisionly, precision, cut yeah. out the bad rotten part of the apple and yeah. eat the rest. But let's talk about it because a lot of times we fold up our tent. Yeah. I, I think for me, one of the, the easiest ways to work with the bad apples <laughs> and not give them, not give all your energy over to them is to, I go immediately to one of my superpowers and that's curiosity. Yeah, I just get boy. really curious with them because I don't believe people are being bad apples consciously. I think they're at their own unconsciousness um, and they're doing what they've been trained how to do, how they've habitually gone through life. I don't think they know any different. And when you start to just get really curious with them, you, you come out of the space of assumption also assuming bad intentions on their part. And you just start to get curious mm. and you get the, if you can be curious with them, you can get them being curious with themselves. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes what I find is they start to question their own thoughts along the way. And that's when things start to kind of tip over a little bit. Now it, it doesn't always work that way. Um, and honestly, you want to spend your focus, energy, and attention really with the people that are giving you the exchange of energy back, not the ones that are sucking up your energy. But if you can take the time to, to step back and just be curious with them, you give that person a chance to calibrate up. Mm. Yeah. They have free will. They don't have to, they can resist yeah. it. Um, but it's your consciousness that creates your community. So, you know, don't give it all over to that, <laughs> to the bad apples, cut out the spots. Like your, like your mom was saying, right? Like cut out the, the spots. Cause there's still goodness there. Yeah. I truly yeah. believe that. Yeah. I watch my mama take a really rotten apple and save the seeds. Mm. I watched her do that. Let's and, see. you know, see, mm. thank you for doing today's show. It's more important than you think. Yeah. The statistics are out. The level of anxiety, let all of this is out. Yeah. And I wish we could do more of this to create a movement around this. Because hope is great to have. I really believe in hope. Yeah. But marginal, marginalized thinking of hope is what gets us caught in a circle that we just go over and over and over again. And what you're asking us to do is consider the way to flourish. Consider yeah. that even if we don't know how to get there, they can call you. But even if we don't know how to get there, 
Have you ever tried to ask people to say, I desire to flourish. I am flourishing now. Yeah. Can't even say it. Yeah. They don't realize it's a decision they can make. <laughs> Quite honestly, because <laughs> again, they're still looking for the, the circumstance mm -hmm. to allow yeah. them to flourish. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. So what do you got going on? Tell us yeah. about your coaching practice. Tell us about what's next and, yeah. you know, all of the above and your personal message here. Yeah. Well, I want to recap just a couple of things real quickly. And yeah. that is, you know, to create a, a, a flourishing community. First off, you've got to know what you want. So you've got to, you've got to really understand like, what's the energy I want from those, from this community. And so that's your starting point. And your community involves friends. It involves family. It involves mentors, coaches, trainers. It involves social media. All of that is part of community all of it. So you can create it, you can uh, curate it. <laughs> so you get to decide what's in it. Remember, use your social media and use the algorithm as a way to help you understand what's the vibe you're putting out there. Um, use it as a tool and then watch it shift as you shift. Because I think it's a beautiful thing to really kind of play it, do an experiment with over the course of a month. Mm. Um, and then the cultivating, you know, what's the energy that you're bringing to it and how are you actually um, giving energy as well as receiving? And, and those are the pieces for me that are about creating, cultivating, curating and cultivating. Um, for me, if you, if you have, if you're struggling to find a community, I have a, a membership program called the Flourish Alchemy membership. And that is a program where, that is all about Flourish community. You know, we have monthly workshops and we do monthly breath work. Uh, we do monthly planning sessions. And that is, I created that completely for community um, because that I want a place where people have that they can plug into. And I also want you, if you're going to come and plug into it, that you bring the energy with you, right? That you're not just taking it, but that you're bringing energy as well. Cause that's how we become powerful and uh, flourish together. We don't yeah. flourish one-on-one, -on -one, we flourish together. Well, I have to tell you how you so influenced me as a business owner and as somebody that does look at the network. Mm. One of the top things on our plate in moving forward between now and the end of the year is going to create the transformation community. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be looking for your guidance in this. And Absolutely. because I don't want to create something that is marginal, I really want it to flourish. And you are the queen <laughs> of flourishing, if thank I you. might say. <laughs> but thank you so much for today. Thank you yeah. for reminding us of what we're capable of. Yeah, always, always. And thank how do they get a hold of you? Me. Yeah, how do they, yeah. how do people work with you? Because I, I yep. always forget to do that. Yeah, on my website, um, bethlarsoncoaching.com. It's L-A-R-S-E-N, not O-N. So you'll find me on my website there. There's a work with me page. It goes through all the different options you have to work together. Um, and again, I'll just um, kind of pitch the community right now, the membership, because that is what we're talking about here today. And that's what that's all about. So mm. go look it up. It's called Flourish Alchemy Membership. And yeah, if it feels good to you, if this feels resonant, if this conversation is something that you want more of, and more than just once a month on a, on a live show, then come plug in with me over at the Flourish Alchemy membership. I love it. Thank you, Beth. Great. Thank you Thank all. You. Thank you, Emily, for helping us flourish during this show. And for all of you out there, please remember what Beth has said every week. This is a birthright. It's yeah. not something you have to earn. It's not a place you have to strive for. Each of us are given this and you could see it in the eyes of an infant. We'll see you next time. I'm back. Thank you for tuning in to the Flourish Frequency Show with me, Beth Larson. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and are leaving with a heart full of inspiration and a mind buzzing with the possibilities of more. Tune in every third Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio for more frequency boosting conversations. And if you want more help getting into your flourish flow and stepping into the possibilities of more, you can find me at bethlarsoncoaching.com. That's bethlarsoncoaching.com. Larson with an E. 